It's kind of crazy when you think about this. Certain stores are letting people just walk in, grab what they want, and walk out. No more standing in line, no waiting to pay, no longer just trying to figure out that self-checkout. You know what I'm talking about, the grocery stores. You just walk in, pick up what you need at the store, and then you walk out the door, just like that. I'm America's Digital Pro, Kim Commando, and this is Commando On Demand, a podcast that provides in-depth insight into the ever-changing technology landscape and the impact it has on your life. And in this podcast, we're going to talk about the future of shopping technology. I'm going to let you know where you can shop, grab, and go. That's the phrase, by the way, without ever having to deal with a cashier. That means no more checkout lines. Retailers are coming up with everything that they can think of to try and make shopping fun and convenient again. Because after all, it's no doubt that when you want something, you just hop online. These stores want to give you, the consumer, an amazing shopping experience. That's right. The future's here, and that's the good news. Some of these upgraded shopping malls and stores are outstanding. They're more like museums or amusement parks, a place where you can go hang out, have fun. I mean, there's a new Apple store that's being built in Scottsdale, Arizona, at the Scottsdale Fashion Square. It's one of those uppity malls. You know what I'm talking about. The big deal about this Apple store is that you can go in, have a cup of coffee, and maybe somebody will be playing the guitar. And of course, they're hoping while you're there, you'll look at a new iPhone or Apple Watch. But the big deal about these new stores is that no longer do you have to stand in line to pay for anything. So the question is, are you ready for a high-tech holiday season and all the fun you can stand in a store and in some cases, not even worry about standing in line? And before we get to all that, a quick word from one of our sponsors. They help make these podcasts possible. All right, welcome back. Our first stop is a special place that's called Amazon Go. It's one of the first so-called grab-and-go stores in the United States. Amazon is the place to be, not only for shoppers and picky eaters, but also if you're a techie. I'm talking about outstanding technology. And of course, you're gonna have some fresh chef-made food too. And these stores are awesome. No lines, no checkouts, seriously, just walk in and out shopping. There's all this cool tech above us. When you walk around, they track your face, they track your movement, and then there's sensors on the shelves. So when you pick something up, it takes, and then it senses that you got it, and then you take it, and it'll add it to your virtual cart, which is really cool. Super cool. I've never waited in line to go to a grocery store in my life. This is the first time experience. How do you guys like waiting in line? Ah, oh, boo, already. Just get this app. You just walk in. Just get the app. You can also use the app to let your family and friends in. Okay, it sounds like fun, doesn't it? But here's the gist of how it works. First, you have to go download the Amazon Go app. You walk into the Amazon Go store, and when you do, something's different. You see, there's a turnstile, and it scans the screen on the app. So you walk through the turnstile, you take an Amazon Go bag, or you can use your own if you want, and then you just shop to your heart's content. You can even open the products, sit down for a bite to eat, and then leave. The Amazon Go app has a navigation bar at the bottom. There are certain tabs there. They're marked key, receipts, about, and more. The key screen brings up the QR code. You remember those. That's that squirrely looking thing. Use that with the turnstiles and it's gonna scan your QR code to let you in. All right, the receipt screen, pretty obvious. It'll show you what you purchased after you've left. And oh yes, Amazon, don't worry, they will charge you. But how accurate is it? Crunch bag sliced apples? Yes, we got it. Crystal water? Yes, we got it. Sugar snappies, iced tea, dessert, two more desserts, turkey sandwich, coconut bar. Bacon, kale, lettuce, and tomato wrap. Diet Snapple iced tea, raspberry. Diet and coconut water, nailed it. It is so precise. Like, it basically got everything. Everything. The algorithm knew everything. This is the future. That's so cool, isn't it? I mean, Amazon is pretty hush-hush about all the technology that runs their Go stores. It's basically a grocery store using artificial intelligence at the core. They applied for this patent back in 2015. And this is interesting. 
The same tech is used in self-driving cars, computer vision, sensor fusion, and deep learning. And all this is used to detect when you take products off the shelf, or maybe you look at it, you say, ah, too much sodium for me. And then you put the products back on the shelf, and then it tracks everything in your virtual shopping cart. There's a highly developed sensoring system. There are weight sensors to cameras, to heat sensors, and also to RFID chips. And who keeps track of everything that happens inside Amazon Go? Well, artificial intelligence, of course. When you enter the store, your photo's taken. When you take something off the shelf, you better smile because your photo's taken again. When you exit the store, your photo once again is taken. You see, facial recognition plays a huge part. You're weighed, you're measured, you're biometrically analyzed, and of course your habits are tracked. Amazon calls it Just Walk Out Technology. And if this technology kind of creeps you out, just walking out might be the way to go because it's only gonna get more personalized from here. So this is the future. Online giants like Amazon.com are going brick and mortar. There are no cashiers, there are no checkout lines, but humans do work here. So I don't wanna hear any complaining about how Amazon Go stores are taking people's jobs away. Actually, think about this. The exact opposite is true. From security guards to stalkers to cooks making fresh food in the back, the employees are buzzing around like bees. And speaking of jobs, seriously, do you know how many developers and designers were hired to make this whole thing come together? And how does the whole thing come together anyway? Well, we're going to hear from some Amazon Go customers who just so happen to be, well, tech fans as well. Before we get to that, a quick break from one of our partners in this podcast. Basically, when I walked in, they scanned my face, and now they know where I am. They know what I'm doing. If I'm picking this up, they know it, and they know what kind of good that is. They also know when I put it back, so if I no longer need it, I just put it back, and it's not going to be in my app. I'm not going to be charged for it. You see a lot of articles talking about this is a store without people, and that's, like, very misleading. But what they're trying to do, and it's so weird, honestly, it's kind of creepy. You're going to be able to use your Amazon Prime account to go shopping, to go grocery shopping. You can literally walk into the store and they use like facial recognition. They have cameras um, everywhere you look that literally watch you. They watch your face. They know who you are. They identify you by just looking at you. And they also identify whatever you grab and put in your basket, your cart, whatever. First of all, your cell phone has the Amazon app. Gets a wake up call from one of the um, NFC scanners at the entrance. Now you go in, you start shopping, you start picking up stuff off the shelves. And um, once you pick an item off the shelf, for example, there's a code that's sitting on the shelf. You pick it up. There's a couple of sensors that are put to work right away. First of all, the pressure sensor or the weight sensor of some sort under the shelf just uh, goes off and sends a signal to the data processing unit. Okay, you're back. So that's the tech in a very small nutshell. Amazon told the Wall Street Journal that they hope to open 2,000 grocery and convenience stores across the United States. Other Amazon stores in the works include drive through retail shops, and an Ikea-type discount chain with 40,000 square feet of pure shopping bliss, could you imagine, with a zillion different ways to order and pick up your items. Okay, maybe I exaggerated just a little bit. It's not a zillion, but you get my drift. Out of the big four companies in the United States today, Amazon, well, it seems to be the shining star. But don't you wonder how it is that they're able to just start project after project and never run out of steam or resources, not to mention money. Well, a New York University Stern School of Business professor, a guy by the name of Scott Galloway was pretty curious too. Scott is a serial entrepreneur himself. He founded nine firms, including L2, Red Envelope, and Profit. His weekly YouTube series called Winners and Losers has generated tens of millions of views. Since he teaches brand strategy and digital marketing, it only stands to reason that he'd like to know as much about the four as possible. The four companies being, you know who they are. Okay, guess. 
Oh, uh, maybe. The four are Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google. So he researched and actually wrote a book called The Four, The Hidden DNA of Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google. So how is Amazon able to do it? All right, check out Scott's answer. Amazon gets to play unfair. Amazon can now borrow money at a lower interest rate than China. And they've been able to change the compact between investors and companies in that they have replaced profits with vision and growth. And as a result, they arguably have access to the cheapest capital in the history of modern business. So the war analogy is at the end of World War II, the Germans had better tanks, better officers, but we had 38 gallons of gasoline for every one they had. Amazon is the business that shows up with 38 gallons of gasoline. So they can go into original content and over be the number two spender just behind Netflix, who increased their original content budget to $2 billion when they heard Amazon's footsteps. They now have license to go into the wealthiest refrigerators in America with their purchase of Whole Foods. I think this is going to be to Amazon what Instagram was to Facebook. I think this is going to be the best acquisition in the last 20 years in retail. So is there a race for greatness between the big four companies? I would say yes. If there were a race, who do you think's on top? Take your best guess now and just tuck it away. Here's Scott Galloway's answer. So the company that you would argue is turning into the one or is performing the best right now, uh, I think is clearly Amazon. If you look at where Amazon is butting heads against the other three, it's winning everywhere it touches them. So in search, where it competes against Google, 44% share of product-led searches in 2015. By 2016, Amazon had a 55% share. Where it competes against Google and Facebook for digital marketing dollars from brands and big advertisers, Amazon Media Group is now growing faster than Facebook or Google is a billion and a half in revenue, triple the size of Snap and creeping up on Twitter. So it's it's becoming a real contender in the world for digital marketing. And then a computer hardware butts up against Apple. The most innovative product of 2015 and 2016 wasn't the Apple Watch or the Apple Pods. It was the Amazon Echo. And then you go on and on, whether it's the cloud, fastest growing business in technology with the fattest margins. Everywhere that Amazon is bumping in to another player in the big four, you probably could fairly say it's winning. So right now, Go is a go. Amazon has huge plans to put them in Los Angeles, San Francisco, and who knows where else. Maybe Whole Foods is next. Amazon acquired them, so why not? And just as a side note, if Amazon's just walkout technology takes off, I don't see why it wouldn't sell to other chains. If this really works, it could put an end to the pickpocket style retail theft. As soon as you touch a product, it's connected to you. Think about that. If you try to steal it, well, whatever, you're going to be charged for it. So if you want to live out your shoplifting fantasies, you can go right ahead. In a just walkout world, Amazon apparently will always be able to find you. At Amazon Go, they track your spending habits, and they will send you coupons based on what you buy. Now, let's take that idea and run for just a little bit into the future, because this is amazing. Visionary companies like Disney Resorts and Carnival Cruise are using wearables that work in tandem with their apps. The goal is to create a vacation and shopping experience specifically designed to please you and only you. Imagine you're in a mall, you order a coffee from you know who, then you're shopping a few doors down at maybe some tech store. A robot delivers the coffee right to you. You don't even need to fumble for your wallet. You don't have to say thank you either. Your account has been charged, it's done. No tipping, so you can have your cake and eat it too. It's just a matter of time before everyone hops on board. Now, I promised you cutting edge shopping tech around the world that would simply blow you away. So here it goes. There's a cashless staffless pop-up shop in China. It's on wheels, so with location tracking, the owner can go wherever the crowds are located. And it's just loaded with goodies. In Stockholm, you'll find a startup called Wheelies. It used to be a coffee shop and a cafe on a bike, but it has since graduated to four wheels and it was renamed the Moby Mart. You can buy everything from shoes to snacks without ever seeing another person. It's kind of like a store in a bus with glass shelves and everything else. You scan a QR code to get in, and then they charge you based on the barcodes that you scan. Alibaba has a few of these. Alibaba also owns a car vending machine. I know, could you imagine? It's the Ford car vending machine in the southern city of Ganjo. How cool is that? You just go online, choose the kind of car you want to test drive, and you pick it up at the vending machine. 
No more car salespeople to deal with, no more pressures, no extended warranties. When you decide it, that's when you make an appointment with a dealership. Oh, and check this out, ladies. How would you like to try out different shades of makeup while you're in the mall restroom? Well, you can with Alibaba's Magic Mirror. It's a virtual makeup try and buy technology. If you like the colors you see on your face, there's a vending machine selling your shade right next to it. Now, if you're not sure when these are going to hit the United States, billionaire Jack Ma, he recently retired as being the executive chairman of Alibaba Group. He announced at a cloud computing conference recently that he sees traditional business to consumer manufacturing shifting to a more personalized, consumer driven manufacturing. So this way we create this instantaneous, customized, seamless shopping experience that customers really want. So yes, shopping in a brick and mortar mall, it's going to rock again someday. You're going to see malls upgrade to a more open marketplace. Kind of a let's hang out and see what happens sort of feel. What was once a boring routine trip for a new phone case is going to be more like a fun amusement park visit. Plants and trees and benches and fountains and sculptures and beautiful stone walkways will replace the standard tile floors and hallways. Smaller, cashless, high-tech pop-up shops will just sprinkle the area with tempting products, predetermined by the purchasing habits of the people who live nearby. Okay, you're going to have rollerblading. Do you remember that? Skating rinks. Oh, I love those as a kid. And gyms. Not so much I like those. It's going to draw the families in. You're going to have lightweight floating architecture. It's going to replace those confining looking square walls. And in some cities, it's going to be hard to tell where the city ends and where the mall begins. You'll be able to hang out there all day. Like in Alpharetta, Georgia. The Avalon in Alpharetta is not just a mall. It's a mixed use development center. And that's what they're calling them, mixed use development centers. Imagine an 86 acre mall with 500,000 square feet of retail space, a 12 screen theater, 105,000 square feet of high end office space, which is built directly over the retail. But wait, there's more, plus 101 single family residences, and 250 luxury rental homes. Wow. And that's just phase one. Phase two includes more business and residential spaces. So when you combine astounding high-tech stores with everything you need and a great place to hang out or even live, what do you get? Yes, the mall of the future, a marketplace that caters to your every whim and no cashiers. One more thing about Amazon Go or any cashier-less store that wants to stay in business. When I said that you can eat there, I meant you can eat well. I'm not talking about stale, gross food that you might get in an airport kiosk. Amazon Go has ready-to-eat breakfast and lunch and dinner and snack options. It's made fresh every single day by their on-site chefs. You have local kitchens involved in bakeries. Of course, you can get grocery staples like bread and milk. But if you're a gourmet, you can choose from artisan cheeses and locally made chocolates. And check this out. If you're too busy to cook, they have chef-designed Amazon meal kits. All the ingredients you need to make for a meal in about 30 minutes. Quick thank you goes out to Professor Scott Galloway, Charlie Acan, Tom Merritt, Server Rental, Andy Altig, and the Silicon Valley Girl for sharing their Amazon Go experiences. Now, of course, there's a good, a bad, and that ugly side of tech. And I cover all of them in my podcasts, my radio shows, and my articles. Because you need to know everything to make a good decision. Of course, security, banking, identity, privacy, I cover all the fun stuff. There's so much to learn. I have an entire staff to keep track of it all. And it's there for you 24-7 over at commando.com. And don't forget, if you like this podcast, give me a great five-star rating. Yes, I love that. Over on Google iTunes, Google Play, or where you get your podcasts. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for listening. And share the wealth and knowledge. I'm Kim Commando.